Hi everyone. Today I'm just going to go through how to use the Input Analyzer. The Input Analyzer is a companion tool to Arena, and we can open it by going to, in the Arena window, by going to Tools, Input Analyzer. We can also open it by just directly going to um, Rockwell, uh, Rockwell Software and down here, Input Analyzer. So the Input Analyzer is a tool that helps us analyze data specifically how to use this data to create ARENA input. Now I've created three input files. They're right here. So I have data set one, data set two, data set three, and each of these files is just a list of numbers. So if you're collecting data for your project or to run a simulation, if you're collecting data, you just want to put it into a plain text file like this, just all of the numbers, no headings, no text anywhere. And that's how you can input this, or you can open this in ARENA. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open file data file use existing i'm just going to click on the first data set and um, so i have now here a data set with a thousand points i have the minimum value the maximum value the sample mean and sample standard deviation so i'm just going to go ahead and create two more files um, use existing data file data set two new file use existing data file data set three um, just to look at these three different data sets. Let's see. Let me just try to arrange these nicely so I can see all three of them at the same time. Okay. So uh, the key point I want to call your attention to is that these three data sets that I created have similar means around 40 and similar standard deviations around eight. But if we look at the distribution, the histogram of these three data sets, the distributions do look quite different. So this is something that is important. Just knowing the mean and standard deviation of a parameter or an input doesn't give you the full information on how that parameter is distributed. So I'm just going to focus now on uh, input one. Now what Input Analyzer does is it performs a series of goodness of fit tests. Goodness of fit tests, if you might recall from lecture, are a type of hypothesis testing where the hypotheses are, let's see, I have a little um, graphic here. Uh, the hypotheses for goodness of fit tests, the null hypothesis is that the data conforms to a certain distribution and the null hypothesis, or the alternative hypothesis, excuse me, is that the data does not conform. So we can actually perform some of these goodness of fit tests. We can fit a beta distribution um, and we can see the results here. Again, the null hypothesis in this instance, uh, our underlying assumption that we're starting off with is that this data does indeed conform to a beta distribution. And then the alternative is that it does not conform. So when we um, do any sort of hypothesis testing, it's always in the same similar manner. We we take our, our sample data, we perform some sort of uh, calculation, and we get a test statistic. And then we see what's the probability that we observe this test statistic given that the null hypothesis is true. Um, and that's what the p-value is. So we have here two um, goodness of fit tests, a chi-square test and a chaos test, and we have their corresponding test statistics and the corresponding probabilities of observing these test statistics if this is indeed a beta distribution. So we can see here that um, the results of these two goodness of fit tests are very different. What does this mean exactly? Well, a chi-square test is used uh, can be used when data is discrete or when it's continuous. If the data is discrete, we must use the chi-square test. Um, if the data is continuous, we may use either tests. But if the data is continuous, then the chi-square test really is very dependent on where we create our intervals of observation. Um, and so it becomes much less, I won't say it's less reliable, but um, we don't have control over how these bins are separated. Uh, because this is done in the software, these default settings may not necessarily be the best settings for this particular data set. If we were conducting our chi squared test by hand, as we did in homework, we may be able to uh, tweak these intervals to make sure that it is uh, the best, they're the best settings for this particular data set. Um, but since we can't do that, um, more often than not, we are just, if it's continuous data, we're just going to look at the chaos test. So we have here now um, a test statistic and a corresponding p-value. Um, so what this means is that this particular data sample creates a test statistic of 0 0.0358. And if this data does indeed conform 
to a beta distribution, then the probability of observing this test statistic is 15%. Um, so that's not bad. Uh, we can look at see what other types of um, distributions can be fit to this data. So let's go test an Erlang distribution. Um, we see that th these p-value is very low. So the probability of observing this particular data sample given that this is the true underlying um, distribution is very small. So we're going to discount Erlang. We can discount exponential, even just by looking at it visually. Uh, we, can check, uh, we can discount a gamma distribution. Um, we can discount a log normal. We have normal distribution, looks pretty good. Triangular distribution, it's uh, not very good. Uniform, definitely not. Um, and a Weibull distribution also looks pretty good. So we have now here three potential um, contenders. So I'm just gonna go to curve fit summary and open up just those three summaries. So there's beta, there's normal, and there's a Weibull. And so now for each of these, we're going to look at the test statistic and the p-value. Now, when I say a p-value is high, it's good, it's low, it's bad, that is somewhat arbitrary. Um, it's up to the discretion of the statistician. So where do we set the cutoff? If it's 15%, um, if there's a 15% probability of observing this test statistic, is that too high? Is that too low? Um, if it's a 10% probability, is that too high? Is that too low? 5% probability? Where do we draw the cutoff? And so for all hypothesis testing, um, we have this sort of truth table. We have our null hypothesis, and it can be true. Um, we can perform some statistics, and we can accept it. And in this case, we have a correct inference. It can be true, and we reject it, in which case we've committed a type 1 error. And we say that the probability of this occurring, we denote this as alpha. Our null hypothesis can be false but we fail to reject it, in which case we've committed a type two error and we denote this probability as beta, or it's false and we do reject it, in which case we've made a correct inference uh, and this probability is, uh, oh, this is actually a typo. This should definitely say one minus beta, sorry. Um, so we have alpha, one minus alpha, beta, one minus beta. Um, and so if the null hypothesis is true and we observe a test statistic, what percentage of time are we willing to accept that we're making a type one error? So we can set that level. We can say that we can set our alpha very small. We don't wanna commit this type of error at all, um, or we can set it quite high. And it really depends on the application. So this cutoff, um, most often when we are just doing um, exercises in class, a lot of times we'll see it set at 0.1, so 10% um, or 0.05, that's 5%. Um, so if we're going with the 10% rule, 0.1, we see that only distributions where it's less than 10% um, likely that we'll observe this test, test statistic, those are the only ones that we're going to reject. So all three of these pass that 0.1 rule. Um, all three of these p-values are greater than our alpha. And a good trick to remember this is this uh, adage that an old professor of mine used to quote all the time, if the p is low, the null must go. So if your p-value is smaller than your alpha level, then um, you have to reject your null hypothesis. So in all three cases, we can't reject our null hypothesis. This means that this data sample could be beta, it could be Weibull, it could be normal. Um, and we have no way of knowing which one of these is correct. Um, and it could be something else entirely that we didn't even test for. But for the purposes of building an arena model, we do have to make a decision. So we can compare these three and see that of these three, um, the beta distribution has the smallest p-value, therefore it is the least likely to be the null hypothesis that it's beta. So we can um, get rid of this one. And then we can look between normal and Weibull, and they both look pretty good. They're both above 15%. Once it's past 15%, um, or we, sorry, input analyzer doesn't calculate the exact p-value, but we can make some inferences based on the test statistic. Um, so test statistic and the probability of observing that test statistic, the p-value, these are going to be inversely proportional. So the lower the test statistic, the higher the p-value. Um, we can see that this test statistic is lower than this test statistic. So therefore, this p-value is higher. And so we can say that it's more likely to be normal. 
And there are other couple of things that we can do. Uh, we can also just look at the square error, which is how this distribution fits this particular data sample. That's not to say that it's going to fit every data sample, but it fits this particular data sample. Um, this has a square error that's smaller than the Weibull distribution. And then also just visually looking at these two distributions, we can see that the Weibull distribution, we have some outliers here. Um, we have some parts, some data points that are not under the curve. And then we have some under reported values. We have some over reported values. So it's not quite a perfect fit, but it looks pretty good. Um, we can also look at the normal distribution and see that um, the tails look like it's a little bit nicer. And then also it looks like the underreporting is a little bit less and, and the overreporting is also a little bit less. So between normal and Weibull, um, the best distribution to pick is a normal distribution. So if we were going to input this into ArenaNet, this is what we would choose. Now, in some cases, it's not as clear cut as to which is the quote unquote correct distribution. Um, and in those cases, the best thing to do is to choose a distribution, test out the model, uh, check your outputs, see if your outputs are validating against the real system. And if things seem a little bit off, try a different distribution um, and then choose the model where the outputs are closest to the real outputs of the system. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this and we can conduct the same exercise for input two and input three. I am going to show you a few t uh, tricks. Um, so earlier I had done each of these distributions individually, but I can also hit the fit all. And what it will show me will be the distribution that has the smallest square error. Now, it's not always the case that the smallest square error corresponds to the highest p-value, as it did in the earlier case. Um, so we do need to check all of the different fit summaries. We can't just rely um, on the fit all to tell us which is the best fit. So we can go to curve fit summary um, and look at the fit all summary. And we can see that by order of square error, um, we have Erlang, Gamma, Beta, Weibull, Log Normal, Normal, Triangular, Uniform, Exponential. So we can open up each of these summaries in this order. Let's go ahead and open up the Erlang distribution. That looks pretty good. We can open the Gamma distribution. It's also high enough. We can open the Beta distribution. Um, it's a little bit lower. It's not, you know, the above 15% that the first two were, but it's still not too bad, so we might can still consider this a contender. Um, we can look at the Weibull distribution and see that this, even though this one had the lower square, or sorry, the higher square error, it actually has also a higher p-value. So um, that's why we need to make our determination based on p-value and not on square error. Um, we can look at the normal distribution. I mean, sorry, log normal distribution. Um, very low p-value, so we're going to discount this. Of course, if our alpha level were set at 0.01, it would still be higher than our alpha level, but it is pretty close. So we might be able to use our discretion and say, even though it's higher than our set alpha level of 0.01, it's too close to um, for us to feel comfortable accepting this. Um, so we'll close this. Uh, the next, we can check the normal distribution. Um, let me see here, this is also very low p-value. Uh, we can check the triangular. And then everything from there down will also be quite low. So we are left with one, two, three, four uh, potential uh, contenders. So let's look at all four of these. Um, and of these four, we see that three of them are above 15%. One of them is at 8.5%. So again, now whether we can um, reject this distribution depends on where we set our alpha level. If we have an alpha of 0.1, then this p-value is lower, we would reject this. If the alpha is 0.05, then this p-value is higher, so we would not reject this. So in the instance that our p-value is 0.1, um, we can eliminate a beta distribution from consideration, and we're left here with three distributions. Now, again, all three of these have p-values higher than 15%, and so it's a little tough to make a determination. The uh, Square error between Erlang and Gamma is quite close. Um, the test statistics are quite close. Um, so it may not necessarily be easy to make a determination. We can uh, check and see how each of these um, fits. So we can check the Erlang distribution and see that you know it fits pretty nicely on the right side, left side. We have some observations that are over the curve. We can look at a Gamma distribution. 
and we can look at a Weibull distribution. And we can see that of these three, where is it? The Erlang distribution has the smallest test, st test statistic, therefore the highest p-value. Um, the Weibull distribution, purely visually speaking, it looks good on the two tails, but we have a lot of values here that don't fit under the curve, whereas the Erlang distribution seems to capture that a little bit better, as does the gamma distribution. So we can eliminate Weibull from consideration um, if we're going to make a single determination. And then between these two, uh, we can come up with different justifications, looking at the square error, looking at the test statistic, looking at the shape, the way it fits, visually speaking, um, I would say that Erlang is the best decision, but neither of these are wrong. In fact, even Weibull is not a wrong answer, but it may not be the first distribution that you should try. It's not necessarily the best answer. So looking at these two, I would select the Erlang distribution. Of course, me, knowing the true generation of this data set, I can tell you that I generated this data set from a gamma distribution, and that just goes to show the nature of statistics. Um, so that's it for how to use Input Analyzer to look at existing data. Um, input Analyzer can also generate some uh, data sets, so we can create a new Input Analyzer file, go to File, Data File, Generate New. Um, and now we have all of the distributions that Arena supports and their different parameters. So I'm just going to do a normal distribution because it's easy. I'm going to say this is a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 8, like the first data set that we looked at. Um, and I can say that I want to generate 5,000 uh, 5, points, um, and the file is going to be called normal.dst. I can create um, 50 points, uh, 500 points, 5,000 points, and that's up to me. Um, but when I hit OK, it just generates a data sample with this many points. Um, it gives me, again, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, and standard deviation of this data set. And I can do this again and again. I can generate a new data set, again, 40 and 8, 5,000 points. Um, OK, yes. Um, and so now this is a slightly different sample. So you can, or you can generate your own samples um, using Input Analyzer as well. So that's it for Input Analyzer. I hope you find this video helpful, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.